little late tonight. We've been waiting for you. Thanks to me first. Go ahead, Clarence. I got it. How's the weather? Not so good. We got some heavy stuff ahead of us. It might get rough again unless we can climb on top. Yeah, after the war, I just wanted to get as far away from things as possible. So Elaine and I joined the Peace Corps. We were assigned to an isolated tribe, the Malumbos. They'd never seen Americans before. It was really a challenge during the year introducing them to our Western culture. At first, they didn't know what to think of us, but soon we gained their trust. Better prepare storing foods for the up-and-coming monsoon months. Also, supperware products are ideal for storing leftovers to help stretch your food dollar. This two-quart seals and right container keeps hot dog buns fresh for days. You must understand, these people had been completely isolated from civilization. No one had ever outlined a physical fitness program for them, and they had no athletic equipment. I started them on simple calisthenics, and gradually worked them up to rudimentary game skills, and finally advanced competitive theory. I was patient with them, and they were eager to learn. They seemed to enjoy themselves. It was probably due to the advanced American teaching techniques that we were able to bridge the generations of isolation and communicate so successfully with the alum. I think they're getting the hang of it. When we re-enlist, I'll teach him baseball. Dad, I don't want to stay here. It's time for us to go back home to the plans we made before the war. A lot of people made plans before the war, like George Zip. It was at that moment that I first realized Elaine had doubts about our relationship. And that, as much as anything else, led to my drinking problem. We did come back to the States. I had a number of jobs. Well, I could go on for hours, but I'd probably start to bore you. You know, I really couldn't blame Elaine if she wanted a career. Oh, I can't stand it. What is it? Oh. Yes? Oh, it's my stomach. I haven't felt this awful since we saw that Ronald Reagan film. I'll see if I can find some Dramamine. <sighs> Captain, one of the woman passengers is very sick. Very sick? I think so, but I've never seen it so acute. Find out if there's a doctor on board as quietly as you can. Joey, have you ever been in a... in a Turkish prison? I should have had that second cup of coffee. Jim, never vomits at home. I'm sorry I had to wake you. I'm just looking for a doctor. There's nothing to worry about. Stewardess, I think the man sitting next to me is a doctor. Sir, excuse me, sir. I'm sorry I have to wake you. Are you a doctor? That's right. We have some passengers. They're very sick. Could you come take a look? Yes. Yes, of course. Oh. Let me see your tongue. I'll be back in a minute. You'd better tell the captain. We've got to land as soon as we can. This woman has to be gotten to a hospital. A hospital? What is it? It's a big building with patients, but that's not important right now. Tell the captain I must speak to him. Certainly. Victor, we're running into some heavy weather. Can you... Roger, take over. Captain, how soon can you land? I can't tell. You can tell me I'm a doctor. No, I mean, I'm just not sure. Or can't you take a guess? Well, not for another two hours. You can't take a guess for another two hours? No, no, no. I mean, we can't land for another two hours. Fog has closed down everything this side of the mountains. We've got to get through to Chicago. <laughs> What is it, Doctor? What's going on? I'm not sure. I haven't seen anything like this since you need a Bryant concert. What was it we had for dinner tonight? Well, we had a choice, steak or fish. Yes, yes, I remember. I had lasagna. What did he have? 
Yeah, Fish. Doctor, there are two more sick people, and the rest of the passengers are worried. We'll take care of the passengers. Find out what the two sick people had for dinner. This is Captain Over speaking. Been a little bumpy up here, but we'll be past it in a few minutes. Uh, a couple points of interest. We're now flying over Hoover Dam. And a little later on, we'll pass just to the south of the Grand Canyon. Meanwhile, relax and enjoy your flight, OK? Chicago, this is flight 209er. We're in trouble. We've got to have all traffic below us cleared. And I want a priority approach and landing in Chicago. Yes. Oh, stewardess, my husband's very sick. Can you do something, please? Well, the doctor will be with you in just a moment. Uh, one thing, do you know what he had for dinner? Yes, of course. We both had fish. Why? Oh, it's nothing to be alarmed about. We'll be back to you very quickly. Dr. Rumick, Mr. Hemini ate fish, and Randy said there are five more cases, and they all had fish, too. Yeah, the co-pilot had fish. What did the navigator have? He had fish. All right. Now we know what we're up against. Every passenger on this plane will have fish for dinner. We'll become violently ill in the next half hour. Just how serious is it, Doctor? It's extremely serious. It starts with a slight fever, dryness of the throat. As the virus penetrates the red blood cells, the victim becomes dizzy. It begins to experience an itching, a rash. From there, the poison goes to work on the central nervous system, causing severe muscle spasms, followed by the inevitable drooling. Right. At this point, the entire digestive system collapses, accompanied by uncontrollable flatulence, until finally the poor bastard is reduced to a quivering, wasted piece of jelly. Airline. Automatic pilot. I'll go back to the passengers. So this is Elaine Dickinson. I'm the stewardess. Captain Over's passed out on the floor, and we've lost the co-pilot. Navigator 2, we're in terrible trouble. Over. Roger, Elaine. Roger, I read you. This is Steve McCroskey at Chicago Air Control. Back to you in a minute. Hold all takeoffs. I don't want another plane in the air. When the 508 reports, bring it straight in. Yes, sir. Put out a general bulletin to suspend all meal service on flights out of Los Angeles. Tell all dispatchers to remain at the post. It's going to be a long night. How about some coffee, Johnny? No, thanks. I want the weather on every landing field this side of the line, no matter what the size. You understand? Any place, any place where there's a chance to land that plane. Stan, go upstairs to the tower and get a runway down there. Terry, check down the field for emergency equipment. Chief, we got fog right down to the deck, every place east of the Rockies. There's no possible place they can land. They'll have to come through to Chicago. Looks like I picked the wrong week to quit smoking. I want the best available man on this. A man who knows that plane inside and out. It won't crack under pressure. How about Mr. Rogers? Get me Rex Kramer. Right next to the throttle is the airspeed gauge. What speed does it indicate? 520 miles per hour. Good, very good. Now, check your altitude. That's the dial just below and to the right of the airspeed indicator. 35,000 feet. No, wait, 34,000 feet. No, it's dropping. It's dropping fast. Why is it doing that? Don't panic. 